Hey everybody, Zach here, and welcome to the final lesson of the third section of this RTS tutorial series. In this lesson, we will cover cleaning up and some edits that we need to do to the code. A lot of the issues have been found by people who are doing this tutorial and have pointed out, hey, this has come up. So again, I really appreciate those comments. Please keep uh, leaving them. And as you'll see, these title cards are actually the last thing I record for every episode. So I'm going to give you a warning that there is an additional edit that I've put into this, or additional uh, thing we need to fix, that I've literally edited in after the original recording. So I start the ending, and then I say, hang on a second, we have another edit, just so you're aware. In the description below, there should be timestamps for each edit we make and what they roughly are. That said... Fire up your editor, and I'll see you on the other side. So here we are back in our editor as usual, and as I mentioned, we have a few fixes we're going to go through. So the first one that we are going to address is one that I commented on in an earlier video, and that is when we set up our pawn, we set it up so it was above a ground level that was a little bit lower down. Now we are much higher, at least where the sphere is, from the ground. So let's fix that real quick. Let's go to our player and let's open up our RTS player controller. And let's go down to our basic movement macro. And in here, let's change our X value. And we're going to change it to 110. And I picked 110 because I tried it out at 100 and the sphere floats in the middle of the ground, like expected. And I just didn't like the look of it. I liked it a little bit higher up. So when we hit play, we can see now the sphere is much closer to the ground. You can get a much closer look at things, which you might not like. You might want the sphere to be further away so that people are stuck with this more distant look. Either way, you can now change the value and have it look the way you want. So that completes that first change. The next change we're going to do is we are going to address a bit of the smoothness of the motion of our camera. So close out the controller. And this change comes from uh, Flex, who made a comment on the fourth video of the first section, in which he pointed out there are lag controls we can add on the camera. So if we open up our pawn and go over to our spring arm, and in our details, if we search for lag, we'll see there's enable camera lag and enable camera rotation. We're not going to draw the markers. You can if you want. But all we have to do is enable that. And the settings here go from 1 to 40, where the higher the number, the less lag there is, the faster the item moves or the faster the camera moves. Um, and I've tried a few numbers, and I agree with flex. 10 is actually probably the best. So if we compile this, now that we've done that and hit play, I'm just going to zoom in so you can see this clearly. There's our, um, I did a little bit of panning, but it's hard to tell with panning. There's our sphere. We have an invisible arm connecting us, the camera, to the sphere. If I hit D, the sphere is way over here. So you can see that we are lagging slightly behind the camera. Say if I hit A, if I change our angle a bit, and do W and S, we get the same effect. Same with our edge scroll. And it does make for a nicer sort of movement. It does make it look a little bit smoother and generally a bit neater. Alright, so let's close that one out. And that takes us through that fix. Next, this was brought to, brought to me by uh, Dunkel Sechi. I'm sorry if I'm saying that name wrong. Um, and that is, he identified a bug in our game speed modifier, so our HUD. And that bug is fairly simple. It's one I started to address, and I wasn't sure why I was making the change in the video, if you remember. So I'm going to just keep decreasing our speed until we're pretty much paused. I'm going to hit pause, and nothing happens, of course. Now I'm going to hit increase speed. Nothing happens. Hit it again, and then the speed increases. So in the off chance someone hits both the decrease and pause, there's a bit of a bug. Now, he put his comment up on the 11th video 
of this series in the second section, in a part two video, that is. Um, and he has identified his own fix. We will use a slightly different fix than his. And let's go into our game time. And let's go to our graph. And let's close out that part of our graph. And let's close out that part. And also that part for now. So we are actually going to make... He made his change in the increase speed section. We're going to make our change in the decrease speed section. So I'm just going to very quickly get my... Uh, sorry, my notes on this one open. I'm just going to extend this comment out. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drag off the set game speed. I'm going to create a branch. And off this branch, I want to know, is a float equal to another float? And to make my life a little bit easier, I'm just going to grab my game time, not my game time, my game speed setting, and I'm going to grab my speed setting, and I'm going to get, and I'm going to type in equal. And I want to know, is it currently equal to zero? If not, do nothing. If it is, well then, I want to set our pause. So I'm going to grab is paused. We're going to set it because it's equal to zero. And we're also going to set our current game speed setting. So we're just going to grab that, and we're going to hard code this in as one. And the reason we're using one here is the second someone hits... So let me actually show you why we're using one. So if I hit play... When we hit this, we are at 3 currently, by the way. Now at 2. We're now at 1. Now we're paused. Now that we're paused, if you think about it in terms of the logic we use for our pause button, the last valid speed setting we had was 1. So if we hit pause, we'll jump back to 1. If we decrease it back and then hit increase, we'll go up to 1 either way. It just kind of fits a little bit better with uh, what I want to do. And when I say it fits better, I mean this fix addresses the mistake. Uh, it works better than the original code I put out. So next, what we need to address is a potential issue raised by the same Dunkel in the same video where in his version, he was unable to click on these buttons. And his solution, if you're running into this problem, is fairly simple. If you open up our game time HUD, and we select not the button, but the text. What you do in the details panel is search enabled. So you have this behavior is enabled, and all he did was set that to off to get it to work. Now, if you do that, just to show you what it looks like, it will change the color a tiny bit, so it sort of grays out the text. But only, I mean, I've only done that when I have that issue since it works fine for me, I have left the is enabled on. Um, so I'm just going to save that real quick. Next, there is a mistake I made in, I think, the last video, the video before that. And this mistake is due to the fact I made a, well, mistake in my test file. So let's open up our player controller and go to our event graph. If you remember correctly, when I was talking about Z order, I got it backwards in the video. And that was just because, for some reason, I had conceptualized it backwards, where a lower number was higher priority. The reality is, the lower the number, the lower the priority. And I ran into a bug when I had these reversed, where this is 0 and this is 1, where my game time only worked if I had hit test invisible. Well, because we have these in the correct order, can actually set both to visible. So, just a little bit better on the system. If we hit compile and then play, we can see the buttons still work. So that addresses a small mistake from earlier. And then, finally, there is another one that comes from us, uh, from Flex, where he found what he called on Twitter a simple solution. When it comes to anything with coding, the quote-unquote simpler it is, the better it is. You want to take less steps to do to get the effect you're looking for. So we're going to go to our HUD, and what he noticed, and I'm a little bit embarrassed that I didn't think about this, is that if we open up our either day or minute or hour 
or seconds even, that we have a whole bunch of unnecessary code. So I'm just going to update one of these, and you should go ahead and do the rest yourself. Because there is a much more elegant, and I wouldn't say simple, I would say elegant way to address this code. So I'm in this get minute one, I'm just going to update this one. What I'm going to do is I'm simply going to, drew, oh, I'm just actually going to unhook this one, make my life easier, take this minute local, and I'm going to type in two text, and I'm going to do two text from integer. I'm going to extend this out. I'm going to get rid of grouping. I'm going to set the minimum integral digits, so the minimum digits it needs to two, and the maximum to two as well. I'm going to delete everything else. And I'm just going to plug this original set into the output. Drag that a bit closer. And then just plug this into here. So this was Flex's solution that he posted to Twitter. It is a brilliant solution. Again, I'm kicking myself for not having realized I can do that with these nodes. If we were doing this in C++, this is pretty much the setup I would have used instead of those um, if functions. So if we hit play, all right, we set it to 14. We're, seeing, you know, seeing, we're not seeing any extra numbers, but let's just make sure it works with a single digit number. Now, I know it does, because I've already tested this, of course. So I'm just going to open my game state, find my calendar. I set day. We're just going to change this to 2 for a minute. We're going to compile, and we're going to play. And we see a 0, 2. So it is adding in that extra digit. It just sets this back to 14. Compile and save again. And that takes us through the changes I wanted to do at the end of this section. If you want, you should go through, or sorry, not if you want. If you liked this change and you want, you should go through and fix your day, your hour, and your second. Just be mindful with your hour and second. You have to deal with the military time versus civilian time, or the 24-hour clock versus 12-hour clock. All that said, that completes this third section where we have set up our resource spawners. We have also set up our updates based on changes to the system wait don't go just yet we have one more potential issue that we need to address and i only found this issue after recording all of what you've already seen and the ending that's going to go into this and i found it whilst talking with a uh, with dunkel actually about a potential issue and that was he was trying to resolve the spawner issue before the video came out Yes, gives you an idea how early I pre-record some of this stuff. And while walking him through my logic, I realized that there was an issue with my logic. So let's open up our spawner real quick and address that issue. So, sorry, let's close out the respawn uh, timer there. The issue is actually on our event begin play. So let's walk through this logic together. We're going to ignore these first two pins. We don't need to worry about them. The issue is on this last pin here. So we come into this last pin. We check, are we set to begin spawn on play? Well, first, and now I've seen a second issue that we need to address, we don't have anything coming off this false. As I said, some developers might want these resources to spawn in later. So first, let's address the second issue that I didn't see coming, and drag this false pin into the other branch. I'm just going to put a couple of reroute nodes. Actually, I'll do the reroute nodes in a second. So... We come off this, we'll ignore that false for a second, let's say it's true. We then spawn in a number of resources based on our reference to that resource. We then update our total number spawned in by taking the original total number as a get and adding in the number we just spawned in to get our new total. We then come here, and if it is set, if the resource is set to spawn on a timer and the max number hasn't been hit, we set off a timer. It is this bit here, this branch, that actually poses our issue. Well, what happens if, let's say it's a forest, and you want the trees to regrow over time? And at the start of the game, you know, say the forest is allowed to have 50 trees, you spawn in 50. This timer, this respawn timer, will never get triggered because you've already spawned in the max amount. So... 
we might still want it to go off. So the solution to that problem is very simple. We take this and we delete it. We then delete this hand and we simply plug the is spawned on timer into this branch here. So if it's spawned on a timer, we're going to start this timer. It then will check when we come down here, are we actually have, we have the room to spawn it in. So that's the, the two changes, I guess. I only planned on one. But that's the two changes we need to make to this code. And now I'm going to add my reroutes in to make this slightly prettier. I wanted to wait to add the reroutes in simply so I could delete the uh, unnecessary little bit of code that was there. Just going to move this so it's a little bit neater looking. Yeah. Sorry about the sound effect there. And we can just drag that up so it's a straight line. All right. There we go. That finishes out what we need to do. So I'm just going to compile and save. And all of that said, I'm going to return to the original recording now after I control S save. And yeah. The next section to come out will look at setting up our NPCs. And I'll be releasing a summary video and a introduction video between now and then. As always, likes are much appreciated. It lets me know I'm bringing you content you value. It also helps get that ch this channel out there. Make sure to hit that subscribe and notify bell so you know when the next tutorial is out. And be sure to check out my new tutorial series on Visual C++. The series is geared to get you guys ready for when we do C++ in Unreal, if you guys want to see that in other tutorials. And as always, I look forward to seeing you in the next tutorial, and hope that you have a wonderful day.